Hi guys and welcome back to another episode of My Athletic Compendium. Um, this week we're going to talk about hydration. Uh, pretty topical at the moment, we're in the middle of summer. In the middle of summer? At the start of summer. Anyway, temperatures are rising, we're doing more sport in the summer. Me and you have got a sevens tournament tomorrow, haven't we? So hydration is a pretty important topic to cover. Um, yeah, let's dive in. Yeah. You said you've got some questions for me. Should I we do. start with them? Let's start with the questions. Go on, let's. That you feel like you need to have them. Yeah, days. yeah let's do this. <clears throat> um, In. Number one. In. <laughs> number one. Yep. Um, we've just started, the, the lads that I coach rugby have just started pre season. So, yep. um, you know, they've upped their running volumes a little bit. So, you know, they're not going to be 100% used to it anyway. However, mm -hmm. Uh, a lot of lads have been suffering with cramp in their calves, and mm. I was wondering, is that could that be due to obviously it can be low, low, um, is it potassium or something? But also, cool. but also, could it also be low hydration levels? Yeah, hydration so levels? so cramping is um, it's, there's like a multitude of different things that can cause cramping. Like overusing muscles mm. can cause cramping. So if you don't really utilize a muscle, and then suddenly you engage it quite a lot. Yeah. That can Cause lead to, weaker. yeah, because they're weaker. That can lead to cramping. So, if they're not used to running or they've had a significant time out from running, and now all of a sudden they're running more, um, it could be that those smaller muscles are getting fatigued a bit yeah. more easily. Um, especially like when you go up hills, you tend to use your calves a bit more. And if they're just have been doing some flat running or whatever, and now they're suddenly doing some long distance where it's a a multitude of elevation, elevations, yeah, yeah decreasing um, hills then you're going to be utilizing different muscles so it could be that it could be hydration absolutely so obviously like i've just said it's it's getting hotter so we sweat more um when you sweat you you lose not only water um but you lose specific electrolytes mainly like magnesium and salt um so if you're exercising for a long period of time and it's hot you're going to be losing those electrolytes as well as water so obviously you can replenish that as you're going along um, but if you do get depletion of magnesium and, and sodium then that can lead to cramping but it can also you can get cramping from dehydration of just water as well not yeah, just yeah. the loss of those electrolytes um, it so, could be any of those could be all three all yeah. adding up to each other yeah. what, what I would suggest to your athletes is make sure they are hydrated before they start doing long distance runs and hydration really needs to start like sort of two days before those mm. long distance events so making sure that they're essentially the, the only real way to tell if you're hydrated or not is is your urine clear you could you know someone could be exercising quite a lot or training um drinking four liters and they could still be dehydrated if it's really hot and that sort of stuff so it, it's all about are you weeing as long as you've got healthy kidneys are you weeing clear and are you weeing sort of every hour or half an hour that tends to show you're hydrated mm. um so make sure that they're hydrated before they go um if they're going on sort of longer distance runs i.e when we say longer distance is sort of over 60 minutes or over 90 minutes um making sure that they're taking on additional electrolytes and i'd start that right from the off you know every 20 minutes um, so a lot of people in long distance runs, they, they tend to like replete themselves with electrolytes and glucose when they're fatigued. Mm. But the idea of these is you should be doing it like as a preemptive sort mm. of thing. So if you're running a marathon, even after the first 20 minutes, you should be trying to refuel the bits you've lost, not leaving it two hours before you start doing that. So they could be, you know, taking on electrolytes, making sure they're hydrated, using some isotonic drinks to make sure that they're... What they are drinking is becoming more and more um, utilised. Mm. Yeah, so I'd suggest yeah. any more questions? Um, I do, I've got quite a few to be fair. Oh, go on. This is going to be fun, it's like a Q&A. It's like a Q&A, isn't it? Go on. No, I find it quite interesting because like, on that last point is, um, with it being the start of pre-season, I have given the lads their calf raises and things that are going to strengthen up their calves anyway to mm -hmm. try and prevent it as well. So. Um, I was, and I, I think I'd heard somewhere that hydration could be a uh, cause of it as well. So yep. that's why I was asking the question. But my next one, uh, my next question uh, was: there's some fact that gets thrown around, and I'm a little bit like it's believable, but I want to check it with you first. Is mm. 
I can't quite remember it, admittedly, but it was something like a 1% drop in hydration is a 10% drop in performance or something. 2% drop in hydration can, can, I don't know what, how much it affects your performance, but it is significant. It's, yeah. Um, so 2% drop in hydration, I don't know what that equates to actual like fluid loss in mm. volume, but you know, if you're becoming dehydrated and you're playing a, a competitive sport, or a sport where you're trying to perform against others, mm. um, then that's quite that's quite significant. For, yeah. for someone, you know, if you're running a marathon and you're doing it just to run a marathon, just to beat yourself and, and get mm. beat the time, obviously staying hydrated, making sure you're not cramping up will allow you to perform better. But for the sports where you're, you know, trying to out-compete someone, like in rugby, like in football, netball, uh, mm. tennis, you know, that can go on for hours. Wimbledon, Wimbledon? <laughs> Wimbledon is on at the moment. They go on for hours and they do like a couple of games a week, don't they? Yeah. But if you have a drop in, in performance and it's mental, you're not only fatigued, but you're now performing mm. at a week, at, at, at a worse state. Yeah. Um, and when then when you've got to think clearly, if you're dehydrated, you're not thinking as well as you should be. So yeah. you're not... There's the mental performance side of things, not only the physical performance side of things, but if you're dehydrated, you're getting both negative drawdowns. So mm. it is really important you're staying hydrated yeah. when you're playing sport and training. Mm. Yeah, I was thinking because I, I, I knew obviously there was an element of truth to it. Mm. I didn't know if, if the percentages were correct, but yeah, um, no, I, I, I can't believe it. it yeah. um, physical performance and mental performance decreases sort of exponentially mm. with a, a dehydration so like i said two percent is is i would say like a ten percent two percent dehydration is like a ten percent decrease in your performance and as that percentage of dehydration gets worse your mental and physical performance continues to get worse and worse and worse mm. um so yeah really important that you stay hydrated mm. question number three Number three, I think I've got two more to be fair. Cool. Um, so quite frequently, mm. um, and Lauren's a bit of a, a want to do this as well, and so am I, yeah. is I wake up first thing in the morning, which obviously you're going to be in a dehydrated state already because yeah. you've had that long period of time of breathing and maybe sweating during your sleep and whatever. Yeah. Especially but, as it's hotter now and you tend yeah. to sweat more in bed. So you're always already waking up dehydrated. Mm -hmm. The first thing you do, you do you know, especially if you go for an early morning gym session, is have a coffee because that's yeah. going to wake you up, which is obviously diuretic, isn't it? So mm -hmm. that's going to further dehydrate you. And then go to the gym. Mm -hmm. So what would your advice be for someone who likes having coffee? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it, you know, and also obviously that has a positive impact on your gym performance. Uh, but you know, how would you, you know, how much water, because they say hydrate before you caffeinate, mm -hmm. but how much you, you, should you be drinking when you first wake up before you Yeah, the so, it, so. It, again, it all depends on what you're, what you're doing in the gym. Um, if you're doing something quite low intensity, like lifting weights, rather than suddenly going to do a, a hit session, mm. um, then you can hydrate a bit more aggressively. I mean, I, I would always say to anyone, whether they go into the gym or not, you know, starting the day, what, when you wake up, drink 500 mils of water mm. or squash if you can't drink water. Just something to hydrate you. You might feel like you're hydrated, but get a pint of water down you mm. and you're you're good to go. I mean, when you talk about caffeine and, and the diuretic side of it, coffee, caffeine is a diuretic. But I think I had a look at some studies and it was essentially most coffees again yes caffeine is a diuretic but because you're drinking a certain volume of it mm. you actually get a hydration effect of it yeah, it's, yeah. and it's mm. and it's anything really over an espresso mm. so if you're having an espresso you're having more of a diuretic effect than you would the benefit of hydration because it's only sort of like 60 yeah. mil isn't it 50 mil yeah um but if you're having you know um a latte sort of size or an americano or even an instant coffee mm. 
it's more of a hydration effect. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so you will actually get hydration, mm. but it's not the best kind of hydration you can get. Okay, great. That's so, so again, you know, if you are having coffee or a cup of tea in first thing in the morning, I think people think tea and coffee doesn't contribute to um, your fluid intakes. It, it does. Yes, it's a diuretic, so it will make you wee more, you know, urinate more, but you will still get a hydration effect of it. It's not like you're just drinking mm. espresso, espresso, espresso. Where you become dehydrated and more dehydrated. Okay. That's really interesting now mm. because I, and I'm glad I asked that question because I I always was like, oh, make sure you hydrate before you caffeine. Yeah, yeah. Which is like, I think it's a fair assumption. However, mm-hmm. it's, no, it's interesting that obviously it has more of a hydration effect than it does a diuretic effect. Yeah, and, and I don't know if, I, I know obviously caffeine has lots of different mental effects on different people. Like some people it makes them anxious, some people it makes them. I'm the sort of person that if I have three coffees, I'm your best mate. I'm the happiest person in the world. But then if I'm dehydrated and I have three coffees, I am miserable, I'm tired. I'm actually more tired Mm. than I would be if I hadn't had a coffee. Um, But then if I down a pint of water or a litre of water, I'm hydrated, I'm ready to go, I'm back happy again. So I would always suggest that everyone first thing you should do when waking up is just hydrate rehydrate um it improves you you know your it improves your metabolism it improves your um cognitive, cognitive function, function. Yeah. improves your you know physical if, you, if your physical ability so like if you're going to the gym or whatever but it also improves your mood being hydrated improves your mood so mm. why wouldn't everyone want to feel a bit better mm. um also Hydration is really important for your kidneys. Uh, a lot of people don't drink enough. If you're constantly having um, concentrated urine, you're basically concentrating the amount of toxic products in your kidneys, which, it, I mean, I wouldn't say it damages them directly. Now, I'm not a doctor, but as my understanding of it is you've got all your waste products like um, urea needing to be released and all the byproducts of things you eat and drink. And if that's concentrated in your kidneys because you're not drinking enough water, that can have a more negative effect on your kidneys and and damage them. And that's why people can get lots of kidney stones and things like that Mm. because they're not being hydrated. But by diluting all those waste products because you're drinking enough, you're actually having, you know, more benefit to your kidneys. So that's why Mm. I think urologists always say, make sure you stay hydrated. Um, we recommend for kidney stones and things like that as dietitians that people are drinking enough and making sure they're staying hydrated. But obviously this is a performance podcast. So we not only is that beneficial to your health remaining um, hydrated, but you want to perform at your absolute best and there's no way in hell you can do that when you're dehydrated. Mm. One more question? Um, yeah, I'm going to try and remember it now. What was it? I forgot. It might come back to me. We're hydrating ourselves with a nice yeah, can of Sprite. A short break in this podcast. For, <laughs> not sponsored, but mm, yeah. that's great. So, so I'm just going to go off on a little waffle now. Mm. But hydration, as I as I mentioned before, with you know the, the caffeinated drinks, as long as you're getting over a certain volume and it's got caffeine in it, you're still getting a, a hydration effect. But it's not the most optimal side of things that you can do. Um, there's sort of three different sides, not sides, but like phases, I want to say, of hydration. You've obviously got pre-performance, intra-performance, and then post-activity or mm. whatever you want to say. But prior to you exercising or whether it's um, a match, a tournament, a training session, whatever, you want to make sure you're hydrated and everyone is going to be different. People always say, you know, you should have at least two litres of fluid, but I mean, if you're six foot eight and you're exercising quite a lot and and you're 140 kilos, you're probably going to need more than two litres. Whereas someone who is, you know, 35 kilos and five foot, they're probably not going to need two litres. But the best way to do it is obviously be drinking throughout the day, um, making sure you're not drinking really large volumes in one go to make sure you're not getting a stitch but make sure you're weeing frequently, sort of every half an hour to an hour um, with clear, clear urine. Frequently? 
That is when you're properly hydrated. Properly, yeah. Mm. When you're hydrated, it's often more. Right, cause my... I mean, you. It's it's. It's not to say that you're dehydrated, mm. but you're not most optimally hydrated. Yeah, yeah. Um, so most people, as long as they're weighing like a straw colour, are hydrated, mm. but they're not most optimally yeah, yeah. hydrated. Um, then you've also got during an event um, hydration, and that's really important for your longer, longer distance, sort of longer activity sports. Um, so like I said, we've got sevens tomorrow. It's really important that we stay hydrated because we're going from sort of first games at 10, could be there playing till four o'clock. So that's six hours of playing. Should be a nice day. It's going to be hot. So we're going to be sweating out more, losing electrolytes. Um, so during events, or you could say in between events, it's important that we're taking on lots of fluid, um, not too close to our next bout of activity. Um, so that it's causing us to have a stitch. It's got enough time to work through our gastrointestinal tract. But we also want to be taking on rehydration formulas. So things like your isotonics are really useful for that. I know there's obviously several brands. You've got Lucozade, Gatorade, which specialise in it. You've got those rehydration sachets that you can put in water. and They all sort of contain electrolytes like the magnesium and salt. Um, so not only does that sort of prevent you from cramping, but it helps with the rehydration. So if you just drink water without getting too deep into osmolality, some of you may have heard of that, but that's like the, the fluid gradient between your gastrointestinal tract and what you're drinking. And obviously if it's got a closer osmolality, fluid can, I think it's, if it's got a similar osmolality, it doesn't flow between one to another, but if, if one's got a higher gradient than the other, then water can flow from your gastrointestinal tract, i.e. what you're drinking, into the body. Um, and that's where the, the salts um, and the sugars in those isotonic drinks are really useful because they create that osmotic gradient to allow the fluids to go into you rather than flow, fluids to flow out of you. So water, um, if you drink quite a lot of it, it can actually have like a dilutional effect on your salts in your blood. If you drink too much of it and you're just drinking water, yes, it hydrates you, but it can actually pull some of the salts out of your body, which can obviously lead to cramping as well. So um, hydration sachets are really useful because they've got those salts in them. When I say salt, it's not just sodium, it's like magnesium and mm. potassium and things like that. Um, but also you're drinking that fluid to, to rehydrate all the water that you're getting. Um, obviously if you're feeling really fatigued and you've been doing regular bouts of exercise I know like when we had sevens on the weekend six I think we had five or six games but by game three I was starting to feel really really tired and that's not necessarily down to your, your low energy it is you can feel fatigued just from a lack of hydration and um, so that's really important that you're you're maintaining you know you're getting on top of that and when you do have big long breaks um, that you're rehydrating properly and for people like marathon runners that's it's important to take fluid on sort of every 20 minutes not big amounts but just making sure you're sipping it throughout um, using those re rehydration formulas so that what you are taking in is all absorbed rather than like 75 percent of what you're being absorbed and then we've also got um, after exercise so that's always like, how much do I need to make sure I'm rehydrated? Um, that's quite a difficult one. So what we were always recommended is like, weigh yourself pre-exercise. Yeah. yeah, weigh yourself pre-exercise. Um, and obviously, let's say my, my weight is 90 kilos. It's not, by the way. Um, <laughs> before a game, and then I, uh, I do a six hours worth of, of training and I go down to 88 kilos. That's obviously a two kilo loss. Now what, what's recommended is that you take a one and a half um, liters for every kilo you lose. Mm. So that makes sense. So you lose two kilos, you should be rehydrating with, quick maths. One and a half liters per kilo. Per kilo so yeah, yeah so it'll be two kilos loss, it'll be Three. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's, yeah. 
So you should be rehydrating with three litres, mm. and that's after your exercise. And so you're obviously doing everything I said during the exercise. Mm. But you've noticed a two kilo weight loss, so you're going to need three kilo, uh, three litres yeah. of, of fluid to rehydrate you. Um, it is a bit ambiguous because obviously, yes, you do need to rehydrate you, but you would have lost, depending on how long you've been, you know, exercising for, you would have lost glycogen. Obviously, your your body's store of carbohydrates. So there is a an element of that that you could have depleted. Could be at least, you know, five hundred grams worth, which is five hundred mils. Um, it could be that you know on some triathlons or a marathon run, you're going to be burning through a lot of fat as well. So it could be actual weight loss here as well, um, rather than just fluid loss. But it is a good sort of target to to sort of guesstimate mm. how much you need to, to get back to. Um, and obviously when you finish a, a long distance event, like a marathon, make sure you do hydrate. Don't just celebrate and get on the alcohol um, because that is a diuretic. And yes, it will hydrate you if you're having the volumes, a bit like the caffeine, you will still be depleting yourself. So you could be rehydrating with water, but then the, the diuretic side of things means you're urinating out more salts which means you could lead to cramping and more dehydration. So it's important you're rehydrating. That does make sense because every single time I've gone on the piss after a rugby game, you cramp I've up. Cramped. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. But um, sometimes cool. when you win the tournament, you've got to you've got to celebrate, <laughs> yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Disclaimer: We haven't won a tournament yet. But... Tomorrow might be the day. Tomorrow might be the day. Um, I think that wraps it up nicely. Unless you've got any more questions. Uh, no, well, I remember my question from before actually. Go on then. Was again something I've heard is that there's uh, you could the best or a better source of hydration over water is milk. Yeah. Is that true? Yeah. Yeah. I've, is it because it's got the like more yeah, yeah. electrolytes in it? I suppose. Li literally, and um, full fat milk as well because I think like. <laughs> Again, it goes back to that osmolality, but like the fats in it, the milk proteins, the electrolytes in it as well, all change that osmolality to make it a better hydrating fluid. Mm. Um, I don't know whether it makes it hypertonic, hypertonic or isotonic, but either way, it's a, it's a great hydrator. And as long as it doesn't make you feel sick, some people after they've done a lot of exercise don't want to drink a glass of milk, but... I do. I, I love a glass of milk. And if you've done, let's say, a hard rugby session or you've gone to the gym as well, you want to make sure you've got proteins after exercise. You want to make sure you've got carbohydrates and you want to make sure you've got fluids and you want to make sure you've got electrolytes. So you're hitting all of them. Yeah. A glass of milk, a glass of full fat milk, I'm talking sort of 500 mils here, maybe a pint, maybe a, a bit less. I'm saying a pint for you and I, but obviously females it might be half a pint. Um, you're ticking all those boxes. You're getting the hydration, you, at least 500 mils worth. You're getting carbohydrates in the form of lactose, which is obviously fine as long as you're not lactose intolerant. Um, you've got milk proteins, which are both whey protein and casein. Um, so you've got rapidly digesting proteins, quick, ready to quickly help recover your muscles. And you've also got the slower digesting casein, um, which means that you're getting sort of slowly drip fed your blood with protein to help recover at the later stages um and what else was the other? all the electrolytes that you would have depleted throughout that exercise so glass of milk can't beat it it's pretty cheap and that compared to some of these isotonics mm -hmm. and shakes that you get for the vegans out there does almond milk or soya milk have the same effect or yeah so, much, so or... um soya milk would probably be my vegan alternative choice um it's got a higher protein uh ratio in it than sort of almond or or you know any any of the others um it will have sort of fortified um electrolytes you've also got the fluid and you've got a good carbohydrate amount in those as well um and also soy is a complete protein so it's got all the amino acids you need for recovery obviously if you don't know what a complete protein is go back to our episode of protein and we give a little intro about that so yeah happy days for the vegans go for soya or unsweetened soya if you don't like it um and for the 
carnivores or for anyone who isn't vegan, go for a glass of full fat milk. Nailed it. Happy. Yeah. Nice. Thanks for listening, guys. Take care. We'll be back next week for another episode. Hope you enjoyed it. Take care. Ta-da. Arrivederci. <laughs>